All right, so we're gonna talk about ear anatomy and the pathway of sound. So when an object vibrates, it compresses air and that generates air waves, okay? And that travels through the air and it gets funneled by this outer portion of the ear, okay? So we, you can take the ear and divide it into three major components, the external ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. So the first structure we can see is the big part, the, what we think of as our ears. This is called the auricle or the pinna. This is that cartilaginous, that elastic cartilage, uh, cartilage structure. Um, what this acts as is a funnel to funnel the sound waves into the ear, okay? So this is the auricle or the pinna, you can call it either or, and it acts as a funnel to funnel sound waves into this first canal called the external auditory or external acoustic meatus. Um, I think there's a couple other names that you can call it, but I have it listed as the external acoustic meatus, okay? So sound waves are gonna travel down this canal and then they are going to hit on a structure called the tympanic membrane. And so when I remove this, so this clear structure right there, can everyone see that? This is your tympanic membrane. So think tympani, like an, a drum. Some people refer to it as the ear drum, but for us, we're gonna use scientific terminology and it's called the tympanic membrane. So the sound waves are going to beat your ear drum, right? Your tympanic membrane, and that causes it to vibrate. The tympanic membrane is also the structure that divides the external ear from the middle ear. Right? So where the external acoustic meatus ends and the sound waves hit on the tympanic membrane, now those vibrations will enter into the middle ear cavity, okay? The middle ear is a cavity, the middle ear portion is a cavity, it's filled with air, so our sound waves are still traveling through air. All right, so when the, extern when the tympanic membrane vibrates, it's going to vibrate three small bones called the ossicles. And I'll show you a picture on the PowerPoint later uh, how small they are. They can fit on a coin. Um, so they're very, very small. They're the three smallest bones in the body. We didn't talk about, it, about them with the skeletal system, but they are true bones. The ossicles serve uh, two functions. The os ossicles are going to transfer the vibrations from the external uh, ear through the middle ear into the inner ear where we can actually get action potentials being sent to the brain. So they transfer the vibrations and they're also going to help amplify the vibrations, like amplify the sound, right? So those are the functions that the ossicles serve. There are three ossicles. The first one is directly connected to the tympanic membrane itself and this is called the malleus. Malleus because it looks like a mallet. All right, so this is the malleus. Now, when the tympanic membrane vibrates, it vibrates the malleus. The malleus, in turn, vibrates the incus, okay? Sometimes referred to as, sorry, the malleus sometimes is referred to as the hammer, but we're gonna call it malleus. The incus is sometimes referred to as the anvil because it looks like an anvil. And once the incus vibrates, it's going to vibrate the third ossicle, which is called the stapes sometimes referred to as the stirrups because it looks like a stirrup, all right? All right, once the stapes vibrates, you can see that the stapes is attached to this big chunky portion, this chunky structure. This starts the inner ear. So when the stapes vibrates, it actually plunges in to this structure right here of the inner ear, and this is where the sound waves get transferred from air into water, into liquid, okay, into a fluid, right? So it causes fluid inside of the inner ear to move, yeah? It's one of the reasons why these ossicles have to amplify the sound. It's because it's a much harder for waves to travel through fluid than it is through air. So the amplification, the ossicles help serve that function, okay, to amplify it. All right, so where the stapes plunges into, so now we're gonna talk about structures of, um, before I start talking about the structures of the inner ear, let me actually finish the middle ear. So if everyone's with me, sound waves have been funneled in through the auricle or the pinna, traveled through the external acoustic meatus, hit on the tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane vibrates, which in turn vibrates the uh, malleus, which vibrates the incus, which then vibrates the stapes. 
and the stapes will plunge into the vestibule right here, okay? It's this big chunky portion. Before I talk about the rest of the structures of the inner ear, I'm gonna mention this canal that travels from the, so this is the middle ear cavity. It's filled with air. This canal right here is called the pharyngotympanic tube um, or eustachian tube. I like pharyngotympanic because it gives me an idea of what, what it's located between. Pharyngo means pharynx, like the back of your throat. And then tympanic, referring to the tympanic cavity or the tympanic membrane. So this pharyngotympanic tube connects the middle ear cavity through your throat. Um, there's a little flap right here, which can open and close under certain pressures. This is if you've ever been on a plane, right? Or any sort of uh, ascension or descension, rapidly ascending or rapidly descending, and you have to pop your ears. That's what you're doing is when you pinch your nose, close your mouth and blow out, you're opening that little flap so that you can have an equalization of pressure between your middle ear cavity and the, and the air in your throat. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Um, so what, children get a lot of inner ear infections and it's because mm -hmm. this little flap that closes off the pharyngotympanic tube develops later on in life. And so children, the bacteria from your throat can actually kind of migrate up into the middle ear cavity and then possibly cause an infection in the inner ear. Okay? All right, just some cool stuff to know. <laughs> Is that why sometimes they have to get tubes to... Yeah, so, well, the tubes are, will actually be through in that, inserted in that tympanic membrane, and it also helps equalize the pressure. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so now let's talk about structures of the inner ear. All right, so the stapes just vibrated, and it acts as a piston. So it actually plunges into a structure on the vestibule called the oval window. So what 15 is pointing to, this is the oval window. It's a membranous structure. And when the stapes vibrates, it plunges into that oval window and it causes the fluid inside of this to move, right? And so this whole structure is called, uh, sometimes you'll hear it referred to as a labyrinth and it looks like a maze why it's called a labyrinth. All right, once the fluid inside of the inner ear moves, that fluid is going to travel down this snail shell, uh, snail shell structure called the cochlea, right? And inside of this cochlea is a specialized structure called the organ of corti. Located in that organ of corti are hair cells. They're called hair cells because they have these really long stereocilia that project up. And when they get deflected, now I'm, doing, I'm going over this in a very simplistic way, in lecture you may have to know more details, but when those stereocilia get deflected one way or the other because of the movement of the fluid, that's gonna cause action potentials. And those action potentials will eventually go to the brain, right? Okay, for processing. So that's the cochlea. When you think of hearing, like auditory information, the structure of the inner ear related to hearing is the cochlea. That's where the organ of corti is located, okay? Now, what about this other big chunky piece right here called the vestibule and these little circles? What is this? I haven't talked about this yet. I mentioned only the cochlea for hearing. The inner ear is also related to equilibrium and balance, right? So this is where this big piece comes into play. So this big chunky piece right here is called the vestibule. And then attached to the vestibule are three semicircular canals. All of these structures are filled with fluid, okay? Now, when it, the vestibule and the uh, semicircular canals will be your equilibrium and balance organs of the inner ear. Cool thing about the semicircular canals is that they, you have three and each one will be oriented in a different plane, right? Like three dimensions. And these structures will actually be able to help recognize like, rotational acceleration. And these, so when your head moves, so if you do like a shaking your head, yes, shaking your head, no, or lateral flexion of the neck to either side, these semicircular, semicircular canals will pick up on that, right? And send that information to the brain for processing. Yeah, everyone with me? All right, cool. Now the vestibule, 
is going to be related to, and I'll show you some structures on the PowerPoint that actually do that, um, actually pick up on that information. But for right now, just the semicircular canals are rotational acceleration. Okay. The vestibule will actually be more involved with linear acceleration due to gravity. And I'll show you the two structures in here called the utricle and saccule, which do that. And it's really cool because they have these little crystal uh, calcium carbonate crystals that actually sense the gravity. And that's how that information is sent to the brain. So that's kind of cool. All right. So uh, this information, so when action potentials are generated either by the cochlea or the, or the structures within the semicircular canals or the structures within the vestibule, those action potentials are gonna leave through neurons in this nerve right here. And this is one of the cranial nerves. This is cranial nerve number eight called the vestibulocochlear nerve. Vestibulocochlear, meaning that there's gonna have a branch coming from the vestibule and a branch coming from the cochlea. The information coming from the cochlea, what type of information is it gonna be? What type of sensory information? Auditory. Auditory, perfect. And then the information coming from the vestibule and this chunk over here, what type of information is that gonna be? Sensory. Uh, it's all sensory. Auditory. So auditory is cochlea, mm -hmm. equilibrium and balance, right? Uh, so equilibrium and balance, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so then that information will be sent along the vestibulocochlear nerve, that's cranial nerve number eight. And then if we look, so I'll, these are one of the cranial nerves that you have to know for bonus points, but I'll point it out over here. So here, looking at the brainstem, this is cranial nerve number eight, V-I-I-I. -I -I. Where it's located, it's kind of located somewhat between the medulla oblongata and the pons. So that's where it's good. that information is going to come into the brain, is right here near the pons. Now we learned about some structures in the brain that would be involved in sensory processing or sensory sorting, auditory sensory information. So can y'all guess what, where would, let's talk about auditory for, first. Where would auditory information go once it enters into the brain via cranial nerve eight? What do you think? So it's in the pons, right? Can it just skip from the pond straight up to the cerebrum? No. No, it's got to go, it's got to travel that way, right? So using your brain anatomy, where do you think this information, once it enters into the ponds, right? The ponds, I think I said, did I say pond or ponds? Ponds. Um, where would it, it wants to go up to the cerebrum. Where would it go next? The, what's, what's right above the ponds? The midbrain, right? So that information would go from the pons up to the midbrain. Now there's a structure of the midbrain that we talked about that's related to auditory stuff, auditory reflexes. Do y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. So on, eh, let's see, I'll right here, okay. So here's the sagittal section of the brain. Does, any, does anyone remember that corpora quadrigemina? The yeah, the colliculi, the yeah. yeah. So here, so when that auditory information comes into the pons, it's gonna travel up to the midbrain. And that information is first gonna stop at the inferior colliculus of the corpora quadrigemina. What is that inferior colliculus responsible for? Auditory reflexes. So when that information arrives at the inferior colliculus, if it's a loud sound or if it warrants a reflex, then guess what? We'll carry out that reflex, right? If it doesn't warrant a reflex, then the information just keeps going up, yeah? Because we don't always have a reflex to every single sound we hear, but if it warrants it, then we'll have a, a reflex to point our head in the direction of that sound, okay? All right, so it stops at the inferior colliculus of the corpora quadrigemina involved in auditory reflexes. All right, but we need to know what it is we're hearing, right? We need to process that information. So from the midbrain, it's going to enter into a structure of the diencephalon. Can anyone guess? That's going to sort it and send it to the appropriate cerebral. Yes, yes, yes. So from the inferior, from the inferior colliculus of the corpora quadrigemina in the midbrain, that information goes to the thalamus. And then the thalamus is a relay station, right? It's, the, it's a gatekeeper. It sorts sensory information. So the thalamus is going to say, okay, this is auditory. 
and it's going to send it to what functional area? It's going to send it to a primary. Okay, let's start off with what lobe will it send it to? Huh? Is it temporal? Yep, temporal. Perfect. And that's easy to remember because it's right by your ears, right? Temporal lobe. All right, so the thalamus is going to send it to the temporal lobe, but what specific functional area of the temporal lobe? The primary auditory. auditory. Fantastic. So the primary auditory just brings in the it's sensory information, right? Just brings it in so that we can be made aware of it. But do we understand what it is that we're hearing yet? Mm -hmm. A good auditory accessory, accessory auditory, right? The auditory association. Association. Uh-huh. Yep, yeah, perfect. So then the primary auditory sends it to the auditory association. And then that's when it can be integrated, analyzed, and then lots of other structures in the brain are involved in this too, if we need to make a memory or if it elicits its own emotional response. But for the most part, it's going to go from the primary auditory to the auditory association so that we can understand what it is we're hearing. Yeah? Okay, cool. And, oh, sorry, uh, the vestibular branch. That information dealing with equilibrium and balance will go up to the cerebral cortex into the um, somatosensory area, but it will also go to the cerebellum. Because if you think about what the cerebellum is mainly responsible for, it's for motor corrections, place and space, like helping maintain equilibrium and balance of the body. Okay? All right, and so that's it. <laughs>